Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video we're going to be baking some holiday cookies. Haley from Haley Marie Vintage on YouTube and I decided to do a cookie and sewing collab. So we decided to make a vintage apron pattern and then make a cookie recipe as well. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. If you'd like to see this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Also, give Haley Murray Vintage a follow. I'll leave her information in the description below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Serena underscore. And then you can also support me further by leaving me a virtual tip on Ko-fi. You do not have to, but it's greatly appreciated. So let's get into the video. For today's pattern, I'll be using Modern Simplicity 8085. This is a modern redraft of a vintage pattern, and I don't know the original number. It has the shorter view B that looks more apron like to me because of the big pockets. And it also has the longer wrap dress. We'll be going with view B because it's more apron like, but they're both a wrap dress. The longer dress has a belt and view B is, has like a little wrap around strap to tie in the front. Unlike true vintage patterns, the back of the pattern only has the fabric requirements and the body measurements, and it has a sketch of the back of the garment. It doesn't have the pattern pieces. Because this is a redraft and a modern pattern, the measurements are not the same as vintage patterns. So you're gonna wanna make sure you check your measurements so you're cutting out the right size because this is a multi-sized pattern. You can see the pictures of the pattern pieces on the instruction sheet instead of the back as mentioned before also you can trace this instead of cutting out the pieces so you can keep all of the sizes this is the fabric i'll be using it is a cotton and it's a baking theme the very christmasy bacon themed fabric perfect for this project and when i saw it when i was out shopping for this project i knew i had to get it when i saw that there was a little recipe on there so i'm going to zoom in on the recipe and as you can see they actually have measurements so today we're going to find out if this is a real recipe because after seeing this i figured why look for a recipe when i have one right here to save some time, I already cut out the smallest size of the pattern, which would have been a size six. And now I am marking the darts on the back piece. After you mark the darts, you should stay stitch all of the edges. Then you're gonna do the same on the front, which was cut on the fold. So I went ahead and marked all of my darts at the bust and waist. And then I take it to the machine shortly after that. And I stay stitch the neckline so that does not stretch out. The fabric I decided to use is a directional print and so that's not exactly suited for this style pattern because a lot of the pieces are cut on the bias. So if that's going to be an issue for you then don't use a directional printed fabric because you will have some of your pieces upside down. After cutting out the pocket I go ahead and add the bias tape to the upper edge of the pocket. I went with the candy cane theme because it was so cute that I bought so many packages of it. So I start with the skirt because I wanted it to hang on my dress form so that way the hem could level out. You have to do that when you cut a dress on the bias. Now I wanna talk about the fit or structure of this tunic. If you see on the pattern envelope that the skirt is very pronounced, almost like there is a petticoat underneath it, you can wear a petticoat underneath it for it to have that look, but most petticoats, especially for the time, aren't that short. So another option if you want that structure is to use a sew-in interfacing and a medium stiffness type weight. Sew that into the skirt of the dress and it will give it that belled shape as though it has a petticoat underneath it. I made a brunch coat a couple years ago and the vintage pattern told me to sew that into the skirt portion of the brunch coat so that way it could have that projected look and the brunch coat was about the same length as this dress so if you do want it to look like the pattern art then you will have to stiffen it a bit or it'll just be droopy and hang like a normal circle skirt would without any structure for the purpose of this video, I will not be interfacing and giving this dress structure. Instead, I'll throw on a very small petticoat underneath it so it has that fullness. I just wanted to share this tip with you because oftentimes I feel like this information is implied for the people of the time. Because today's garments don't have quite as much structure as the ones from the past, we often miss the mark when it comes to sewing up these patterns especially if it's your intent for it to look the way that the pattern art is. 
I am not using my serger today, so I French seamed all of my seams, and that is what I'm doing here to the shoulder seam, and the entire bodice is constructed that way. Now I wanna show you how to get your bias tape really flat around those curves. What you wanna do is iron your bias tape in the shape of the curve. This way, the bias tape will lay flat around the curve of your arms and your neck, and you won't have it fighting against the shape of your garment. This works every time and it makes the difference. Once the bias tape is attached to both armholes, then I go in and close up the side seams. The instructions would have you close the side seams first and then add the bias tape later. But doing it my way makes for an easier application, especially if you use pins. Once you are done, you're going to cover the remaining raw edges with your bias tape and then you're going to put a narrow hem on the bottom of the skirt and you will be done. Once my dress is complete, then I move upstairs to the kitchen so I can start on this recipe. I'm really excited to see if it works. So I start out with two sticks of butter because the recipe called for a cup of butter and I cream that in my stand mixer. Since this only has the recipe, I am just making up the directions based off of the cookies I've baked before. And so now I'm adding the sugar and also creaming. Basically, I'm sticking to all the wet ingredients together first and then the dry ingredients last. I'm using molasses in place for the dark syrup because it was vague in that point. And then I add all my spices and now for the flour, it has three cups of flour. I'll leave the recipe in the description below. After everything's all mixed up together, I knead it on the countertop because I just like to do things with my hand at certain points. It's the way my grandma taught me and that's how I know that things are combining, if that makes sense. Can't really tell when it's in the stand mixer. So once I combine this into a smooth ball, I put it in the refrigerator to stiffen up before I roll it out and cut out my gingerbread men. Once my gingerbread men are all cut out on the cookie sheet, I put them back in the refrigerator so they can cool and set up so that way when I put them in the oven, they do not spread. I allow my cookies to cool for about 30 minutes or however long it takes for the oven to preheat at 350. Again, there is no instructions for this, so I'm making it up as I go. So far, this seems like a legit cookie recipe, so I'm really excited. I did not look it up to make sure that gingerbread were made this way. I wanted to be surprised. Now it's time for the cookies to go in the oven, so after this, we'll do an outfit reveal and talk about the taste. I'm really excited for these. This is the completed dress with the petticoat underneath it if you wanted to wear it as an apron with something underneath I would widen up the armholes a bit and the next clip I'll show you it without so the recipe was actually a cookie I think that it tasted or not even tasted but the texture of this cookie was better the day when it first came out of the oven compared to the next morning I had to film this morning because um, we had lost all daylight. So I tried it this morning and the cookie texture is a lot harder than it was before. Um, again, I've never had gingerbread cookies before because I'm not a huge fan of ginger and the ginger taste is not very strong in this because there wasn't a whole lot of ginger and I already knew that. And also the cinnamon taste isn't either. I definitely think that um, Maybe in another recipe, there's more spice in it than this fabric told me to add to it. Um, and also the texture is a little bit harder. So maybe I could have taken it out of the oven a little bit sooner. So that way it would be softer, but I knew gingerbread cookies were supposed to be a little bit more brown. So I left it in just a tad bit longer. And it also to um, add to the texture or like the crispness of it, it could possibly just have way too much granulated sugar in it. I don't know, I'm not an expert baker. Um, but I feel like the, maybe the sugar crystallized and added to the harder texture, but that's not what we're here for. <laughs> but ultimately I do like the taste of this cookie. It's really good fresh out of the oven. It has a bit of a bite to it. So maybe it can pair well with like coffee or tea, but, um, I have no complaints and neither does my kids. So maybe you have fabric with a recipe on it. Give it a try and then let me know. So that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed. I really had so much fun. Thank you, Haley Marie Vintage, for doing this with me. It was really fun to do. And I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Serena underscore. And I will see you soon. Bye.